Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Another definition thing here for 16 on the ASVAB. It says the figure above is what type of quadrilateral? Now quadrilateral alone tells us that it has four sides. So we know that at least is true. There's a lot of symbols here. Let's go ahead and talk what those mean. Um, so first off, if you have a dash through two different sides on a figure, that means that they are the same length. So in this case, A and C are the same length. And because this one has two dashes, that means B and D are the same length. Now, what does it mean, these little arrows here? Well, because this has an arrow going up and this has an arrow going up, it means that these two are parallel to each other going in the same direction. And B and D have the double arrow, meaning those two are parallel to each other going in the same direction. So let's go ahead and go through these now. So a square, first off, means that it's all four right angles and all sides are equal to each other in terms of length. We don't know how long these are, so we can't prove that it is a square in any way. A rhombus means that all four sides have to be equal. Um, so if we're looking here again, we don't know side length, so we can't figure that one out. Um, a trapezoid means that two sides are parallel and the other two sides are not. It's exactly one pair are, par are going to be parallel. So looking at these, both sets are parallel. So that means that it can't be a trapezoid. And a parallelogram means that both sets of sides have to be parallel to each other. Now, as a consequence of that, they also end up being equal, meaning that all of these are going to help us define answer D, a parallelogram. Feel like I got a lot to say about number 17 here, just because it's kind of silly how it's labeled, but whatever. It says angle AB shown above is an, and that gives you different types of angles. Here's the deal what I don't like about it is angle AB is silly. Usually when you name an angle, you label like what this guy is right here. So let's just say this is B. Then we have A and C. You would label this angle A, B, C. So you know that, like that's what you're looking at here. So that's silly, but whatever. Let's move on from there. Let's talk about what these definitions mean. Complementary angle. A complementary angle is two angles that add to a 90 degree angle. Well, a 90 degree angle would be this. So that's not that. So that's out. Supplementary means that it adds to 180 degrees, which would be a straight line. Well, it's not that either. So we're out. Acute means that it is less than 90 degrees. Well, this one is not less than 90 degrees. It's actually more than that because you can see we go past the 90 degree mark. So it is not that. Last but not least, an obtuse angle is one that is larger than 90 degrees. So in this case, that is larger than 90, this angle right here. So our answer is D. So here's the deal. For number 18, it wants us to solve this quadratic right here. And if you didn't know, there's extra steps involved if your leading coefficient in front of the x squared is not just like 1. In other words, not present. So it has a negative here. Well, guess what? If you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the whole thing by negative 1 right off the bat because it's going to eliminate this negative right here. So if I multiply everything by negative 1, that makes this x squared plus x minus 30 equals 0, all right? Now we can just straight up factor this. So what does factoring mean? It means you split it into two different things, set them both equal to 0, and I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to a positive 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. What two numbers would multiply to negative 30 and add to a positive 1? Well, that would be a positive 6 times a negative 5. That gives us the negative 30. Add them together, it gives you a positive 1. Then, since we don't have a leading coefficient anymore, we can just put an x for both of here. Now, here's the key last step. You still have to set each one of these equal to 0. So x plus 6 equals 0, while it just subtracts 6 from both sides. And that gives me that our first answer is x equals negative 6. Then we need to add 5 to both sides for this one, and that gives me that x is also equal to a positive 5. So I need the answer of negative 6 and positive 5. If you plug them back in to check your work, you will see those both get 0. So that means our final answer here is B. So number 19 is honestly just a terrible question. I mean, it shows you sometimes that like just test makers 
don't have the best wording. It says a square box is a volume of 64 cubic in inches. All right. So we got a square box. All right. Let's say, I don't know, looks like this. And it's got a volume of 64 cubic inches. Now, what does that tell me? Well, we know that all of these sides have to be the same. So that means that we're looking at some number that when you do length times width times height, it's going to give you this volume. Well, that number is the same. So really, this is just x times x times x, where that's just the length, the width, and the height, like the side length here. So that is going to be equal to 64. Well, that's the same thing as also saying like cubed. So what number times itself gives you 64? Well, that answer is actually 4, because 4 times 4 gives you 16, times another 4 will give you 64. So that means our side length here is 4. Now, here's where it becomes a crappy question. It says, what is the parameter? Well, the question becomes the perimeter of what? Of the whole box? Is it like of one side? Like it's not really clear here. Well, my options perimeter is usually your edge lengths all added together, right? So if I did the whole box, I know that this would be four plus four, which is eight, plus another four and another four, giving us a total of 16 for this square. All right, so this square has 16. Well, I know the back side of the box would also have 16 because it's the same as this one. And then this side over here still has this one and this one. Well, 16 plus 16 is already 32. And then if we add another four, 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 and four, that would be another 16. So if we look at that final answer, we're looking at 32 plus another 16 is putting us at 48. And that's not an option here. So I'm guessing by perimeter, it means perimeter of just one square. In that case, our answer is 16. B. So number 20 on this test says that a cube has a volume of 64 cubic inches. What is its surface area? Uh, this is actually very similar to the one above it, so that might save us some time here. But again, we're looking at a cube. It has 64 cubic inches. We talked last time about how that means like, okay, the length times the width times the height is going to end up giving us 64 because that's how you get volume for a cube. Now, because it's a cube, all of these have to be the same because your length, your width, your height would all be the same. Therefore, we could just take the cube root of this guy or say what number times itself three times is going to give me 64. That answer is four. Now it says what's the surface area of that same cube that we were looking at before. Well, remember, surface area is when you find the area of all the outside surfaces of your three-dimensional shape here and add them up. Well, let's first off just look at the side here. This one would be a 4 by 4, so 4 times 4 is going to give me 16. Well, now I know that I have the area of 16 here, and there are six sides on a cube like this. Think of like rolling a dice, and you see that, well, a die, and you end up getting six sides. Um, so that means that I need to do this 16 times 6. So what do you get when you do 16 times 6? Well, that ends up giving you 96, which means our final answer here is C. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABSVAT.